and I'm the head teacher here at Brancaster School. My name is Ali Chesterman. I'm a class two teaching assistant. I'm also a school governor and a parent with a daughter at school as well. Well, the Diamond Jubilee has coincided with our 150th anniversary, so we're selling, celebrating both. Um, for the coronation celebrations, uh, we were invited by the Ship Hotel to do portraits of the Queen for a competition. And they displayed it up into, in the pub and two children were picked as winners. Each received a prize of a tea party for seven at the hotel. And we also decorated our own bunting, which was also um, hung up in the pub so all the general public could see what the children can do. And we all dressed as kings and queens for the day. And we also designed crowns to go in the Jubilee exhibition at the church. And then all the visitors at the church were invited to vote for their favorite. And then we brought winners from that. So we did lots of little competitions, dressing up, decorating. My name is Christine Highmore. Mr. Morris Playford. And uh, I am a former pupil of this school of 75 years ago. And Alan Townsend, ex pupil. Arlene Townsend, ex pupil. Marcus James Townsend, ex pupil. Henry Townsend. Henry Townsend, present to pupil. My name is Sophie DeWinton and I'm Chair of Governors at the school. Um, ten years, I should think, I was associated with the school. First as a clerk to Governors, then as a Governor and then as Chair of Governors when we actually ran our campaign to keep the school open. That was when I first came and I hope it wasn't anything to do with me, but there were only 18 children, six in the infants and 12 in the juniors. And I think they felt that it was just too small to be viable. I think I read about it at the time, because we now live in Kings Lynn, which is a long way away from here. Well, not a long way, but a fair way. And I think I did read about it, and I thought, well, that's a sad thing. It's always a sad thing when schools close. But uh, sometimes they have to because of the drop in population. And there were two teachers then, and that was it, apart from a cleaner and a, somebody used to come and do cut the grass, I think. That was when I first became associated with the school. That was before I was even, before my children came here. Um, but um, as uh, a resident in Brancaster State, obviously knew it was really, really important that we keep this school open, not only because I wanted to send my children here, but because the school is the heart of a community and it's so important to keep these places going. Once the school is closed it will never ever open again and if you close a school you're literally taking the heart out of the community because you won't get families moving here. Being a church school the rector was always the chair of governors and when he saw that there was and they were going to close the school. And there were a lot of us that wanted to say, well, uh, you know, let's make a fight of it. If we're going to close us, we'll go down with all guns blazing. That was the way we, we thought about it at the time. And the, the rector hadn't got the time in his busy life to get involved in that, so he was quite happy to hand over to me um, to be uh, chair of governors. And so, you know, we ran a campaign, and we had, it was the busiest three months of my life, I think, we ran a campaign with the help of a lot of local people. We wrote letters, we attended meetings and um, lobbied hard to keep it open. But by the time they actually tried to close it, we had a new head teacher and things were moving forward. And I think they'd missed the boat actually and the whole community got behind us. 
and we had lots of meetings, lots of support. A busload of people went down to Norwich. And in an area which has nearly 50% holiday homes, it's really important that we get, get young people living here. So it was very, very important that we, we fought and expressed our views and got the whole community to express their very strong feelings that this school should stay open. I did more than that. Didn't well, you, I? You, you did um, I went to County Hall and uh, I was very interested. We have a, um, a granddaughter of nearly 20 um, and uh, she was three at the time when we were fighting that so that was very important you know, to work hard for that. It's never easy because the num numbers of children are always on the low side, um, but, it's, but it's a great school. The recommendation from the officers was that they closed our school and the councillors decided no, they weren't going to close the school. So <laughs> my abiding memory of that meeting is that, hey, the tremendous relief, we couldn't believe it, and to go outside in the lobby of the county council where the television cameras were there. And we've got a local person here, Arlene Townsend, who was a parent at the time, or grandparent, I think. But <coughs> she was the one that was interviewed by the Anglia television, and there she was with tears running down her face, tears of joy, I might say, that the um, school had been saved. Sure, we've gone from strength to strength since then. On the other side, we were very lucky to keep the school because they're closed deep down. We were very lucky at that time to have two schools in one parish, I know yeah. different wards, but so we were quite happy that we were able to keep one out of the two. Uh, a lot of people were upset in Bankster State because that was their, virtually their school. But now, if you look around the school, there are teaching assistants, three teachers I think, and of course the numbers have gone right up. My name is Sabrina Rayner and I'm 11 years old. My name's Caitlin and I'm 12. My name is Lisa Fuller and I'm 12 years old. I'm 12 and my name's Snow. In a normal school day, we probably, firstly we come in and work until we have a 15 minute break. Um, and we have another about an hour lesson until lunch and the rest of the afternoon. But it's good how they space out um, doing dip. So you might do a bit of English in the first morning and then you might do a bit more in the afternoon. What's your favourite subject? My favourite subject is PE because we do lots of things to do with PE and we have special people like coaches coming in to help us with it. My favourite thing was probably playing football um, because I got to be in the school team so I really enjoyed playing. Do you like going to school here? Mm. Yeah, I do like going to school. My favourite thing is that we get to do lots of activities and everyone's really friendly. Um, my favourite subject is maths because well, I just love working with numbers. <laughs> My favourite subject is art. My favourite subject probably had to be PE because there was a variety of different sports that we could do um, and with different people and people came in to do different subjects with us so we didn't just have one single PE teacher trying to do different sports. We had people coming in to do with netball, um, football, so it was a good variety. My favourite teacher is probably Mrs Tidd um, because I just thought she was really good with us all and she was really nice and kind. Um, I do have a favourite teacher and um, that was Ali because she was always really nice and like fun with whatever we were doing. So can you guys tell me what kind of sports you do here at school? Um, football, football, cricket, cricket rounding, tennis, cycling, yeah. lobster. Yeah. What's your favourite? Football, football and sprint. sprint. Cross country. Yeah, yeah. cross country. Yeah, but our favourite is probably. Yeah. My name is Eric. My name is Lily. My name is Noah. My name is Finn. My name is Elise. My name is Tay. My name is Finn. So tell me about your school day. What do you do in your school day? We, um, First we do the register and then we do the um then we do oh then we do play and then we do math make sense and then we do children time, then it's year twos 
and then we have lunch and then we do whatever after that. No. And um, we do maths and um, reading. I really like it because we have fun at school and do maths and stuff that we do like to do. The school has just changed dramatically since I've been working here. We're a lot more up to date than we were when I first came. Um, when I first came there were only 18 children and now we've got 42. Um, the school buildings have developed, the activities we do, great changes. Well, they've now got a lovely playing field, which we didn't have then. No, we, no. we had to go further through the village for a playing field. Less, less teachers for more children in those days. Yes, we had three classrooms in my town. Um, infant till you were eight, and then the juniors up till you were 10, 11, and then you moved into the senior room, where you, you were there for four years. Uh, also, we used to have our own gardens down here. It was all, had a, no allotment as such, a piece of ground that each t two boys shared a uh, piece of ground to grow their own vegetables, and that all helped you to uh, get an interesting garden that we still have today. I think we have our underlying Christian ethos, which is there all the time. Morals, values, that sort of thing. The children are very caring of each other. They look after each other, they really, really think about each other and, and being kind to each other. And there's a real family feel to the school and I think that comes from the underlying Christian ethos. This, with this being a Christian school, how do you think that affected you as people and how do you think it will affect the current students here and how they grow up in future lives? Well, I think that uh, we should all learn about the Christianity and I think being a church school, the parson's very active at the school and I think that's wonderful. Today you need to have, you know, the church behind you. I think, I mean, I'm today, um, I cut grass for the church and, you know, I'm still, I only go to church on certain times, not for myself, you know, a christening or a wedding, but I think they need their their church input from a school, you know, the prayers, uh, mainly they have to say grace at dinner time, which we used to do when we had our dinners. We always said grace at the beginning of our meal. I think it would be a very different place without, yeah. My main concern is that we provide a good education to good high standards and therefore have a, a great school to offer people and uh, make sure that we get as many children as we can here. And does this school, school hold anything major in a part of your personal history? Yes indeed it does because in the last years I was here the senior classroom used to do a play, a Christmas play, uh, under the tutelage of the headmaster Mr Frank Room. And uh, we used to build a stage of blackboards which they don't have today and uh, I used to help Mr. Room with the lighting and that inspired me to serve an apprenticeship as an electrician and eventually be an electrician which I was in the electricity industry for 46 years. So that's, that's affected your... That, that, that's, that, that my, it was just fiddling around with little bits of flex and so forth under his uh, tutelage inspired me to be an electrician and uh, I, I became one. I like school because I like lunch because it's fun. This school is better than other schools because it's smaller and so therefore you get more attention from the teachers and get extra help easily um, so you feel more confident with, with yourself. This school is better than any other schools because it's the little school ever. This school is the best school ever because um, my favourite thing about school is um, when we do art. My favourite thing about school is reading. Oh no, my favourite thing about school is working with your friends and um, getting to like have a laugh. My favourite thing about school is writing. My favourite thing about school is doing maths. This is the best school. 
there are still lots of people in the community who uh, live here and have sort of grandparents who have been at this school, which is fantastic. Um, we're hoping that they'll come along to the 150th celebration. Um, it's a tremendous achievement and um, we're looking forward to another 150 years.